And that seed of pain, hunger, poverty, um, lack, the seed of lack, um, has made them become insatiable to go more and more and more. I want to have more. I want to have more. I want to have more. To understand both end of one spectrum, which is like not having anything and having everything, but it's just two end of one spectrum. Hello to all you soulful intuitives and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about heaven and hell. But before that, I wanted to thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. It means a lot to us. And we look forward to add more and more to our Soulful Intuitive channel. So the reason why we are talking about heaven and hell today is because of the conversation that struck up, uh, I think, a few days ago. And uh, people were discussing um, organized religions and uh, how... Even people who are very devout Christians or Muslim or Jewish um, of, of faith, they are um, now thinking, well, why is it that if we're not Jewish or if we're not Christian or if we're not Muslim, then we're going to go to hell? And how is that aligned with divine justice? So I have given this quite a lot of thought, given the fact that I am a gay man and I was told from early on that gays will go to hell. And uh, as a child and as, um, you know, a teen, uh, you're thinking about, well, why is it that our creator has made me a certain way and then would want to punish me because of that. It's no different than saying, you know, why I was born a boy or why I was born a girl. And then I was uh, told that, oh, by the way, the boys would go to hell or the girls would go to hell. It just didn't really add up in my mind. And also I didn't have the mental capacity in order to differentiate between what I was being told as a child by adults and what was the actual truth. Anyway, fast forward to my adulthood, I really looked into it from all kinds of aspects. I read into almost all of organized religions and the other school of thoughts and other ways of worshiping the universe and all from east to west and I still couldn't make up my mind as why is it that every organized religion says that there is heaven and hell and if you're not part of our group you're gonna go to hell and that's just one category of people that will be condemned to go to hell just because you're not part of, let's say, that specific organized group of um, religion. And then I was talking to uh, my mom uh, the other night, and she was telling me that, well, you know, like most of these organized religion actually came from the Middle East. And, um, but we all know that people from all around the world, from all parts of the planet have had their own ways of worshiping and connecting to the universe and they have their own beliefs and they have their own set of um like belief system about the world and god and consequences and actions and what they should do and what they shouldn't do and so um it just makes sense, let's say, for a lot of um, organized religions who have come from the part of the world um, that maybe desert was part of it, that, you know, heaven would be somewhere very luscious, full of trees and river and tr uh, water and greenery, because that's, you know, the idea of heaven when you're living somewhere that's very dry and very sandy. 
and uh, void of uh, vegetation. But also, you know, the animals in hell are usually the snakes and, uh, you know, scorpions and um, reptiles, you know. These are also like snakes and scorpions and um, uh, spiders. Like these are the things, the creatures that well, we are, a lot, of, a lot of us are afraid of them. And also a lot of them are found in drier areas, you know. We're not told that, you know, in uh, hell, you're going to be eaten by a whale or by a shark. Um, because being tortured is being tortured, but, you know, somehow snakes all ended up in hell. Um, I don't know if snakes live in heaven as well, you know, given the fact that there's going to be so many trees and rivers and fruits and, you know, just vegetation. I'm assuming we're going to have the same creatures that you find in hell also in heaven no disrespect to anyone who um is still in that belief system i think that as human beings we evolved and most of these religions came a few thousand thousand years ago and back in the day the collective human understanding of god and um our actions and our behavior were not where it's at today just like how when you are trying to tell a four-year-old don't touch something hot you're not going to explain what heat is what is it going to do to your skin why are you going to get a blister you just say oh you're going to touch that and you're going to burn because that's the understanding of a young mind and if we are going to talk about the young souls or collectively as human beings, you know, the less evolved spiritually, then you're going to tell them, you know what, don't bury your daughters because you're going to go to hell. Because burying a live human being because it, um, they were not born as boys and because boys brought money to the family when they married and girls took wealth away from the family when they were married off to another family and that's just one example so you know uh, and not to say that we're still not killing each other we definitely are because we're still not there but it was so much easier to say you know what um don't take orphans money uh you know don't use and abuse your power over the weak and over the minorities and over the underdogs because if you do that you're gonna go to hell so sometimes when you're um not as involved these um these consequences are something that you might think about because you are not involved therefore you understand oh fire Oh, eternal damnation. So then you're not you're not going to go around and do these things because back in the day, if they said, well, you know, for every action is a reaction, and if you do this, then you are going to come back over and over and over again, and you're going to experience the same thing or the same misdeed that you are doing to another human being, but maybe ten times worse. Maybe they didn't understand it because all they understood of life is, oh, you know what? You're born, you live, you die, over. They didn't understand the cosmos. They didn't understand um, science. And, you know, back in the day, they did not have, you know, for every action, there is a reaction because science wasn't there. So you have to talk to people collectively in accordance to their collective understanding of the world around them. So... It's very obvious that if you wanted to teach the barbaric people the, the better way of living, you wouldn't start with philosophy. You wouldn't start with poetry. You would just tell them in very basic terms that, you know, life is precious. Maybe don't kill each other. You know, earn your own food. Don't steal it from others. And be nice. Because when you're not nice, you're going to get the result. Maybe not the next day. But you will definitely get it. And then now 2,000 later, 3,000 years later, we are beginning to understand the karma 
the concept of the consequences of our actions. And a lot of people, when you talk to them about organized religion, they say, oh, well, you know, they're so basic, they're so barbaric, uh, it's just very unscientific. But why are we even condemning them? They served their purpose when they came. They were promoting love, they were promoting gender equality when there was no understanding of gender equality. They were, for, for the most part, they were trying to bring order into communities and cultures that lacked order, that lacked compassion, that lacked civility. And you never start um, your 12 years of education, undergrad, or before you go to university with uh, grade 11. You will start at grade one, then you will graduate and go to grade two. And of course, there's some people who can do the fifth, five grades in a row, maybe in one year, but those are gifted people. But these programs were designed for communities, for the slowest and the smartest, for the gifted and the non-gifted. And, and even today, there are people who do benefit from do's and don'ts and from simple symbolic consequences, which are in this situation, heaven and hell. Oh, you do bad things, you're going to go to hell. So if that is going to stop them from killing each other, from being deceitful, from lying to themselves and others, from becoming the worst version of themselves or completely following their shadow, then hell serves a tremendous purpose. And heaven, by the way, also serves a good purpose because, you know, if going to somewhere luscious and beautiful and full of miracles and beauty is going to promote people to be nicer, then sure, let's do it. It's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. So... Now, if you want to look at it from an evolved point of view and from, let's say, today's point of view, then you're going to say, well, you know, there is, we, we now understand the world better. We understand energy. We understand science. We understand consequences. We understand that we are all connected. We understand the seasons. We understand the uh, animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, we understand um, space better, and we're able to understand that there is rhyme and reason in this vast world we call universe. And because there is rhyme and reason with tangible and non-tangible, with material and non-material, then we can draw the conclusion with our more evolved brains that, you know, we don't need to be afraid of hell in order to make the right decision to be a better human being. And we also don't need to be encouraged to be better human beings by the idea of going to heaven, the luscious garden, to do better things. Because we do understand now, most mostly like... Uh, on a bigger scale, most a lot more people are understanding that their actions have weight to them. So, and and it only goes back and affects them before it affects anyone else. So, you lie to yourself, you will suffer. You are cruel, you will suffer. You lack humility, you will suffer. So basically, all the good things that we're doing will affect us and all the bad things that we're doing will affect us too. Now, also, if we were all heavenly creatures and if we were all doing, if we were all enlightened and we were all doing uh, everything great, everything right, everything um, purposefully uh, divine all the time, then there would be no pain. And unfortunately, on this planet, in this world, we are here to learn. And no one will learn in the void 
in a situation where there is no pain because pain will always a catalyst for change if we're because if you're satisfied and blissful and 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 happy and joyous all the time then if somebody says you know do this thing it will make your life better you're like oh my life is perfect as it is why do i have to change it so somebody outside of us has to inflict pain on us at times and that pain then will become part of our soul and that that internal pain will then ignite that desire for us to get up and change for better in order to get closer to that divinity to our source to that um godly seed that we all have inside of us and if you even want to look at yourself you know if you had the perfect body if you had the perfect body you and, and you would be eating garbage all the time and somebody told you well eat better eat healthier it's better for you you're like why i'm healthy my body's perfect why do i have to like eat change the way i'm eating so but usually when your health becomes less health less healthy when your energy drops when your um physical aesthetics is is affected by the way that you're eating that will cause you to pause and think okay how can i change for better what elements do i have to bring into my life that can make me rise above this level of where i don't want to be so pain sometimes caused by us and sometimes caused by others or our societies and somebody has to do the bad deeds at times and if you want to look at things from a very philosophical point and not from when you're in the fight with someone right you can just say before you're born um as we all have those soul contracts that you know what i'm going to be your dad this time because you were my dad last time and maybe you weren't all that great towards me and that pain made me become um a better human being a stronger human being that pain made me want to be a better person towards others uh that pain made me want to be a better father that pain made me want to be a better citizen so this time i'm going to be your father and i'm going to maybe be not as loving towards you and then you're going to use that pain in order to evolve as a soul so if we look at it like that not from in the movie from from the above like a director when the director is creating a movie or a or a play somebody has to play the villain and is that villain always a bad person or is that villain is playing a difficult shadowy role so if you look at it like that then there will be no need for heaven and hell because maybe we're all in this big theater of life with certain shortcomings that we have designed to come into this world with and certain shortcomings that then our counterparts are supposed to put inside of us by inflicting pain or by inflicting emotional um hardship and then that pain will be the seed inside of us that will grow into this like uneasiness anxiety and pain and that will make us want to change get off our bums get off the couch and uh and take the step towards correcting certain things and to understand maybe certain concepts you know the concept of discipline the concept of uh uh the concept of spirituality the concept of um feeling our feelings the concept of dreaming the concept of 
leadership and its responsibility, the concept of ownership and its responsibilities. So all of these things, because usually when you talk to, you know, certain entrepreneurs or people who are very, very wealthy, and I'm not talking about generational wealth, I'm talking about people who are self-made, they tell you, oh, we didn't have anything growing up. We were poor. Uh, my mom had to, uh, you know, do certain things in order to just bring bread to the house. And that seed of pain, hunger, poverty, um, lack, the seed of lack, um, has made them become insatiable to go more and more and more. I want to have more. I want to have more. I want to have more. To understand both end of one spectrum, which is like not having anything and having everything, but it's just two end of one spectrum. And when you understand this side and you understand that side, then you have a full understanding of it. Just like how when you understand, for example, uh, innocent, like childlikeness, and then you understand and then you experience maturity in adulthood, then you understand the whole spectrum of of being a human, of, of a being. When you're a child, in the middle, and at the end as an adult. So, full circle. So if we look at it like that, then we don't really need even to have the concept of heaven and hell. But how could you explain that, let's say, to human beings who were still killing each other for a loaf of bread, or for, because they just thought that the universe is that's it the universe is this planet they didn't even know how big our planet was they didn't know they wouldn't even leave their town or rural area or even their country so they didn't know how much vastness how much um like endless source of light and material and mineral and water and everything and like they didn't know that in our galaxy we have maybe like but I think it's 100 billion or 200 billion stars just in our galaxies. So now that we understand that there is no scarcity and there is no lack, all there is is like infinite, then we don't need to worry about, oh, I'm going to kill you because I don't have enough or I'm going to like steal from you because I don't have enough. And that's just about material things. So, but if you told them that, oh, like we kind of planned this, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a good guy this time in this regard and you're going to be a bad guy this time in this regard and together we're going to create this contrast and by this contrast i'm going to learn that oh i don't like this i don't i don't want to feel this way so therefore i'm going to turn inwards and i'm going to evolve i'm going to make this sh this diamond inside of me i'm going to give it another edge so if we look at our soul maybe young souls are these diamonds in a rough and every time that we come back, we create this scenario where because of the pain that is inflicted on us, we're going to create one more cut on this diamond. And overall, life after life, life after life, we become this diamond that has been cut in a, like a thousand different ways and angles that it's so sparkly and shiny that now is worthy of being closer to that divine light that we're all from. So if we look at it like that, then there is no heaven and hell because there is no good and bad in a biblical way. There is no um, evil as in, oh, like just, you know, because like think about like our beautiful, just merciful mm, divinity that we call mother divine, we call universe this universe with this much intelligence that is infinite do you think this universe would have allowed an angel going rogue for eternity or for a very long time just to prove that oh i'm gonna like you know whisper in everyone's ears and make them go bad and then at the end you are going to send all of us to hell. What angel would have, would have had the nerve, the angels who were so close to, you know, uh, quote-unquote, God, know 
the might, know the power, know the know that there is no beginning and no end when it comes to anything, power, wisdom, everything. But oh, I'm gonna go against you, and at the end, I'm gonna fail, and then I'm gonna go to this eternal damnation. No, no. But that was what was needed back then in order for people to have some understanding of their actions. Because like I said, you cannot explain neuroscience to a second grader. You start simple. You start with alphabets. You start with myths. You start with simple stories. How can you go for complex poetry if people don't understand simple literature? First, they need to learn the vocabularies. Then they need to learn the, the meaning of it. Then they need to learn the structure of how you put the words together. Then they need to learn what metaphors are. Then they need to learn how you rhyme and different kinds of poetry. Then they need to learn references. Then they need to learn cultures. Then maybe they can start understanding poetry. And that takes also years to really master and peel the onions. So that is what I have come to realization and it that's what made me make peace with what religions have brought us instead of dissing them, instead of insulting them, and instead of completely canceling them. But realizing that we are ever evolving and like evolution is not just for species, evolution is also for souls. And we cannot go and say, oh, dinosaurs were wrong. Dinosaurs were a mistake. No, we needed dinosaurs in order for us to be here today. And we needed those maybe um, simplistic understanding of high vibration, low vibration, pain, pleasure, or let's say good and bad, in order to make our brains collectively evolve and make our souls and spirits collectively rise and expand so we can come closer and closer to understanding this majestic world we live in, this universe, because this universe is so complex and this universe is so multidimensional and without us collectively growing as being in every way possible, mind, body and soul and spirit, then we won't ever be able to understand it. So don't get stuck on heaven and hell zoom out and look at this as this is all being played in order for all of us collectively to grow just like if you want to zoom in on the epicenter of an earthquake it's a tragedy but if earthquakes don't happen the tectonic plates don't move and if the tectonic plates don't move then the lava then the magma then all these like material in the core of the earth would not be able to move then our planet would die. If you look at maybe the atomic fusion and in all the stars that creates light, but if you zoom in, oh, it's scary, it's an explosion. But if you zoom out, it's one sparkling, beautiful star. And maybe when a star comes to an end and then it implodes, and then it just destroys everything around it. That's a disaster. But that has to happen in order for the universe to grow even further. So I think I'm going to leave you with one comment today, which is maybe we should get really good at zooming out instead of zooming in. So then we can go inward. So then we can expand outwardly in every way possible.
Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it and I will talk to you soon. Bye.